Hello there, people. Welcome to uh, lecture two, hour two of kinematics. This video, we're going to focus on graphing, basically looking at the trend of graphs and also see how we can use graph to describe motion. Lah. Okay, and all the changes that is happening when a dinosaur jump across the cactus, no lah, whenever something is traveling. Okay, so we're going to start off easy first. As usual, hopefully you've watched the first lecture where we define displacement, velocity and acceleration for you. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, I am actually uh, marking out the time of different sections of the graph so that the uh, motion is aligned. Okay, and ta-da, editing magic. Okay, so let's look at the first section. Let's say now I draw a straight line. Uh, this straight line actually shows you that, oh, hey, it's a constant gradient. So this means this is a constant velocity. Since if you've watched the first video, you would know that the uh, displacement against time graph shows us velocity, the gradient of the displacement against time, time graph. So constant gradient, you will get constant velocity. So constant velocity here means zero gradient. And as usual, Gradient of the VT graph will give you acceleration. So hence, zero gradient, zero acceleration. Ta-da! Okay, so the gradient of the ST will give you a V. Gradient of the VT will give you your A. And you can see ST has constant gradient. So VT, V will have constant value. All right. So let's look at another form of uh, motion. So I notice I have no space, so I'm going to create more space for myself. All right, but what happens if your gradient changes? For example, in this part, you can see, oh, hey, miss, you draw this. Okay, if you're wondering why I'm drawing that, then I changed my mind because later you confusion. Uh, so I decided to draw a good old parabola. Okay, a negative x square parabola. All right, so uh, later in the next in this video later, Miss Ellie will explain a bit more about the parabola. But let's look at the first section of the parabola. There is a decreasing gradient. So the gradient is decreasing. So if the gradient is decreasing, means that the velocity is decreasing. So you can see here the velocity will decrease. And at the middle right of the parabola, the turning point, the gradient is zero. So you can see here you will have zero velocity. All right. And also at the same time, the second half of the parabola, there's an increasing gradient. So you will have an increasing velocity. Means the velocity doesn't look like it's increasing. Eh? It is increasing. Magnitude-wise, it is increasing. The, the number is getting more and more negative. So from here, you will notice that there's a constant gradient. Okay, So this means that there's a constant acceleration. And you will get maybe something like this because this is a negative gradient. Okay, negative gradient. So negative constant gradient, negative constant acceleration. Okay, let's look at the second part. Let's say now I'm going to draw something. You know what? I'm just going to draw a reverse parabola. So this is a positive x square graph, but in the negative uh, side of the displacement. Because hey, guess what? Positive displacement and negative displacement because it's a vector, right? So they mean different things. Positive means above the starting position, on the right of the starting position. It's really up to you. Lah. And negative normally is for down or below the starting position. Normally, it's decided by the person, but this is the normal convention that we follow. All right? So you can see at this first green part that I draw, huh, you have a decreasing gradient because it's getting less and less steep. All right? But this gradient is negative, you know. Is it negative? Yeah, it's negative. Okay, so if you don't know whether the gradient is negative or not, you can look at the trend. Okay, the slant is downwards. That's why this is negative. Or you ask me la, in person. All right. So you also notice that at the red graph, right, there's also positive negative. So let us decide what does a positive negative mean. For velocity, right, a positive means the object is moving up. And the negative means the object is moving down or towards the left. Make sense? This one you decide by yourself. Ma. So in this part here, you will notice that, hey, the velocity is positive, means your object is moving up. But it's moving up, it's just moving up slower and slower. See this part here? Here is your, you're on top, you're moving up slower and slower. Okay? Am I on top or below the starting position? Don't know need more information. The first graph will only tell you where you are. 
Okay, how you are moving, you need to consider separately. Basically, you need to consider the gradient. The second graph will tell you how you are moving, whether you are above or below the starting position, will depend on the other graph as well. So from here, right, you can see if you look at this red color portion, the gradient actually decreases to zero, positive gradient. That's why this is positive value that decreases to zero. Okay, and then at this part here where my mouse is, this part, the gradient from zero increase and become more and more negative. That's why the velocity here increase but become more and more negative. Magnitude wise, it is increasing. Okay, the negative sign here is to show direction, not magnitude. That's why although the graph is still going down, we say that the velocity is increasing at the second half. All right. So again, uh, the positive, negative. And then let's see here, uh, because here you can see for the green graph, uh, the gradient is negative, uh, but it's a decreasing negative gradient. So that's why the green part here is a decrease. It's a decreasing, is it decreasing? Positive gradient. Okay. Yeah, let me check. So this is a positive gradient. So here you will have a positive value. All right, so let's say here you're going to draw this part here. So you can see this is an increasing uh, positive gradient, the purple part. So there's an increasing positive value. Okay, so here as usual, the velocity is zero. The green part, the velocity is decreasing. Uh. This is DEC. All right, so here you can see this is a fairly good representation. This is not a sinusoidal graph, although it looks a bit like it. It's a bit this part here. Let me ding, 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 ding. Okay, this part here, these are two parabolas. Okay, if it's a sinusoidal graph, then the V will look different. Then when you wait for A2, la, we will reach there, don't worry, in due time. Okay, so for this one, uh, parabola, you can see, uh, decreasing, decreasing positive, decreasing positive gradient. Increasing negative gradient, increasing negative gradient. Here you have decreasing negative gradient. So you've got decreasing negative value, the green part. Purple part, increasing positive gradient, meaning the graph is getting steeper and steeper. Then this part is also getting larger and larger positive value. Okay, so you can get, if you look at this gradient here, this one is increasing positive gradient. So this one is increasing positive value. All right, will they ask you to draw the whole thing? No, but they like to ask this in objective, la, to choose the correct shape. Okay, they are not always quadratic. Uh. Don't get used to a straight line. I'm just simplifying things for you. If it's sinusoidal, uh, you differentiate sign. What happens when you differentiate sign? Uh? Ayo, that one, you wait, la, you wait, wait for your maths. By the way, right, when you differentiate this graph, you get this graph correct. That's why when you differentiate a quadratic, you get a linear. And when you differentiate a linear, you get a constant straight line graph. Make sense? Okay, so now um, I think what I'm going to do is I will talk a little bit about the trend of the graphs. Okay, and what I mean by the trend of the graph there, this one means, you know how graph there's a few type one. So let's think about it this way. We need some descriptive words, okay? So to talk about how the magnitude of something is changing, for example, I said just now, oh, velocity increasing, velocity decreasing, okay? And we need to talk about how the rate, what kind of rate is it changing? So if you look at this top graph, right, like the graph on top here, you will notice that this part here, yes, the displacement is increasing, but it is increasing at a decreasing rate, meaning in the beginning it increased a lot and then towards the middle it increased less and less, okay? And if you look at the second part, it's decreasing, but it's decreasing at an increasing rate. Wow, this one will begin to drop, but it will drop faster and faster over time. Wow, miss, this one is confusion 10,000. Don't worry, I list down all the possibilities for you. So the first one, right, let's say we want to talk about magnitude and rate. Okay, so let's start with the most straightforward one, which is uh, increasing straight line. If it's a straight line, means it increased with a constant rate, meaning every second it will increase by the same amount. 
So if it's a line with a negative gradient, then it will be decreasing with a constant rate. But, 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 but this is assuming that you are in a positive, positive axis, lah, okay? Positive quadrant. All right. And then this one is increasing and increasing rate, this shape. Because you can see the gradient is getting steeper and steeper, meaning your value is changing or becoming bigger faster and faster. Okay, don't memorize uh, this thing, learn to see. This one is also increasing, going larger and larger, but it's at a decreasing rate. Okay, so meaning the graph is getting like flatter and flatter. Lah. Then this is decreasing at an increasing rate. Okay. Because it's getting smaller and smaller, but steeper and steeper. This final orange one is decreasing at a decreasing rate. So all of this is the all, all the possibilities. Um, whether it's increase or decrease also depends on the quadrant. So always remember, whenever we talk about the magnitude, it increases or decreases depending on the actual absolute value itself. In physics, negative 4 is bigger than negative 2. Okay, it's not because you owe, owe me money. Not that concept. All right, so right now, let's look at some objectives. Okay, this kind of uh, shape of the graph for looking at trend one is very popular in objective. La. Not say it wouldn't come out in structure, but structure normally you have to plot plot values. Law. And you know, who has time to plot values? Got, la, got structure, they'll give you more marks, more bang for your buck. Anyway, all right, so let's look at it. Look, let's look at an example. I can't say English anymore. Okay, so we are at page six. Okay, this looks strangely like the graph I've drawn in your notes, but actually it is not. Eh? Okay, so um, let's just practice our skills. Okay, so this is a VT graph, but I want to look at the trend first. Okay, so you have a few different, actually you have four different trends here, lah, okay, like that. So let's say I call this section A, section B, and then here section C, section D. Okay, right, so um, I'm doing this live, so it's going to be a bit slow, hopefully not too slow. So A is increasing, the magnitude is getting bigger and bigger at decreasing rate that is section a b is decreasing at increasing rate i use arrows lah huh? c le. c looks like decreasing but it is not because the negative number is getting bigger and bigger so c is actually increasing at decreasing rate and d is decreasing i know it's very deceptive because it looks like it's going up right but again we are talking about magnitude this one magnitude okay of the velocity so in this case it is decreasing because it's becoming a smaller and smaller number at an increasing rate Okay, so you don't confuse, ah? you confuse, please ask, okay? But anyway, we are going to move on and look at this graph. Which graph represents the displacement of the object from 0 to T? Well, let's think about the relationship between V and S. Like for example, V is defined as rate of change of displacement, meaning V is actually the gradient of your ST graph. Okay, so there are a few important points here, namely the points where the velocity is zero, here, here, and here. So if these three points, the velocity is zero, right, it means that V is zero, gradient is zero, all this point, yeah, this point here. So I need zero gradient at the starting point, at the very least. So you can see for C, uh, the starting point, the gradient is not zero. So C is out there. For B, the starting point is not zero. B is out there. Okay. Then you can see A. This one promising. Uh. Here is flat, zero gradient. This part is okay. So the okay one, I will put a cross. Uh. All 
all right so this is okay this is also okay so all of this is fine no problem okay and in fact this point is also okay that this looks zero gradient this one also zero gradient who knew then how well you then need to ask yourself where is your um, value of your gradient maximum okay so here your v is maximum right this point here v max okay this point here is v max but negative meaning uh this point here must be gradient maximum but negative la. okay just like this point up here is maximum gradient but positive so i think the corresponding point would be here this is the steepest point but positive gradient and here is the steepest point but negative gradient so the answer is a but let us check out d first if you look at d right you can see here there is another zero gradient and there's another zero gradient so if actually d is this graph uh, then you actually should have five points where your v is zero but this one you only have three points so d is out lah. okay there's the even faster way okay so that is one question let's try and see how much we can fit in 10 okay this is another interesting question from page 11 interesting because uh it's acceleration against time where we rarely see lah, okay so the object starts from rest which graph shows the variation with time the velocity of the object over the same interval oh boy start from rest well done they all start from rest so you notice that your acceleration is always positive okay so if your acceleration is always positive right i know i didn't mention in my video previously just now uh, what that means but i'm just going to write it here if the acceleration is positive acceleration and the direction of force is net force lah okay acceleration and the direction of net force must be the same okay so if acceleration and direction of net force is the same this means uh, your net force or your force is always in one direction if your force is always in one direction it is impossible for your velocity to change direction think about it la you have a ball let's say rolling on the floor and if there's no opposing force in the opposite direction your ball wouldn't suddenly change direction we are not in an episode of doctor sleep okay that is not going to happen so c is out there okay because uh i write here for you la a always positive very nice doesn't mean that b cannot be negative it just means that cannot change direction okay so next all right so let's think about the relationship now a is equal to dv dt meaning a will be equal to the gradient of vt okay so are there any points where a is zero yes at the starting point and at the ending point your a equal to zero so this means the gradient at the start and at the end should be zero so this is a possibility the gradient here is zero this is also a possibility g g oh. g g don't g g first now look at this point here this point here your gradient is maximum okay so not gradient is maximum your a is maximum so if a is maximum this what this means that dv dt is maximum or the gradient is the st steepest here lo. this is the steepest gradient because this one doesn't look very steep to me and this is just total nonsense so the answer is a okay learn to look at gradient function okay let's look at slightly different questions now i think we have done enough gradient function questions already okay this is another one uh, this is from page 13 or n 14 paper 13 
So you can see there's a ball rolling down the slope x, y, and then rolling the along y, z, and then hitting the wall, bang. Okay, so right now, you it rebounds in elastically. So I know you haven't learned a lot of uh, collision yet, but I think you have enough information to know when you rebound elastically, you will lose kinetic energy, meaning your speed will not be as fast. Lah. So that means oh, when you check, right, I can eliminate D already because this speed, this initial speed and this final speed looks very comparable. So in real life, if you actually have the paper, you can put your ruler here to measure. La. I just do not have a ruler on one note. I do have a physical ruler, but you can't see it if I put it on the screen. What am I talking about? Let's carry on. Okay, so GG, all the graph look the same. Okay, let's think. If the rebound speed is slower, okay, meaning how? Huh, after collide, oh, the speed will be slower, which is the option of B, A, B, and C. Okay, this one I write here. La, because the rebound speed is equal, which shouldn't be the case. Alright? So all of this is slower. If it's slower, right, it should take a longer time to travel back from Z to Y. Because if you look at this graph, uh, here is X, here is y, here is z. And by right, right, this is the same z because you hit the wall at z and then this is y. So if you look at the y z in front and the z y at the back, it cannot have the same time. Why? Because the speed is not the same. So for this one, the time taken to travel from y to z cannot be equal to the time taken to travel from z to y. So b is wrong now. Okay, if you don't think they're equal, you measure la with your ruler on your paper. Okay, so GG law now, which one to choose because they are both longer. You compare la, generally this one is like an IQ question. La. You need to compare different parts of the graph. So for A and C, the different part is actually the back part here, you know. Let me highlight for you. Ah, this one. This is the different one. Hmm, which one? Do you think do you think is the right one? Okay, well, where why does the speed decrease? Because now you're gonna roll back up. I don't know where you Okay, like it moves back to Y, comes to rest momentarily somewhere on X Y. Uh, so I don't know now, maybe X prime. Okay? So this is X prime and this is X prime. Let me ask you a question. Does C look a bit suspicious to you? Because, right, if your velocity can drop so fast, uh, that means the velocity that accelerated you, I mean, sorry, the force that accelerated you should still be the same, right? The reason why the ball went down in the first place, okay, so this one is a little bit chapter 4, but if you learn your forces properly in your high school days, this should not be new to you. The force component that is pulling this down is mg sine theta. Okay, why theta? What is theta means? Okay, la. I show you everything. La. Okay, so the weight of the ball will pull it down like this, correct? And then we do this thing we do in chapter 1 where we split the black mg, our label later, into mg sine and mg cos theta. But miss, how do you know what is theta? You never label also. You come down. I am labeling now for you. So this angle between the inclined plane and the horizontal axis is theta. Okay, so um, I guess I have to explain again. No? So right now you can see this is 90 degrees. Alright, and this is also 90 degree, correct? Since this is both 90 degree, can I then say that this right angle triangle here will be 90 minus theta, meaning here, this angle here will be theta. 
So this mg sine theta law, because it is opposite the angle, and this is beside the angle, this will be mg cos theta. Now don't worry about mg cos theta, because the ball ain't falling into the inclined plane like that. That's just weird. So the only thing that pulls the ball down is mg sine theta. Now I don't care whether the ball is going up or going down the inclined plane. Gravity will not change direction for you. So if gravity doesn't change direction for you, meaning this whole thing is constant. So this line here and this line here must be parallel. Because the gradient of xy and the gradient of yx is the acceleration or the resultant force, which will be the same. So the next part here, I will say that the gradient, okay, xy must be equal to y x prime, because let's say you travel up to x prime, lah, because the weight component, mg sine theta, is the same. You didn't change the weight, neither did you change the mass, neither did you change anything lah in your mg sine theta. So the answer is A. Very suspicious uh, if it suddenly becomes so steep. What is that magical force that suddenly pull it? Here, got problem. Alright, so that's the example for this video. And I will see you in the next lecture. But go try some objective pass here. See you then. Bye-bye.